You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is a discussion about what's happening in Greece at the moment. You may have seen Greece in the news a lot um, recently with regard to what's happening, especially in the economy. And this is the second part of a discussion I had with a friend of mine, George, who has actually emigrated from Greece to the UK. And in this episode, George shares his thoughts on what's going on in Greece. So it's a little different this week, but I think it's an interesting subject. And I hope you enjoy the discussion. Thank you so much for listening. The other things that I wanted to ask you about, which I think is a lot of people are very curious about, is what's going on in, in Greece at the yeah, moment. And we could write a book on that. <laughs> I'm sure. So obviously, this is um, hard to summarize, but yeah. you know, I think you know from the press and the, the mainstream media what people see of Greece and what people understand. And I think it's very limited what they understand. What they yes. understand is, oh my God, is Greece going to leave the euro? Why is that going to happen anyway? What the hell's going on? Are there riots? What, you know, and this is the first thing that people know about it is like, oh, you know, maybe Greece is about to get kicked out of the euro or leave the euro. That's kind of all they know. So, yeah. you know, from your perspective, especially because you come from a kind of, you know, um, market oriented, entrepreneur oriented background, like what, what the hell's going on at the moment? Well, <laughs> At the end of the Second World War, there, <laughs> I have to start from somewhere. And it's 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 a it's a long story. At, this, at the end of the Second World War, there was a civil war in Greece uh, between those that wanted Greece to be under the sphere of influence of the Soviet, mm. uh, the, the the Soviet states, and then uh, those that didn't want that. Um, through the Marshall pra- Plan and through other uh, through Harry Truman's subsidies, uh, Greece managed to avoid that danger and it became a free country. It didn't fall into the hands of uh, communism. Um, You would say that's a good thing. You would think that that's a good thing. But actually, in the long run, it hasn't really worked for Greece. And the reason it hasn't worked is that people didn't actually get to see what it's like. Even though there was a lot of backing for communism back then, Mm. which wasn't in place, let's say, in countries like Britain or anywhere else where there is traditional values of private property and liberty. You know, Greeks didn't have all that. So they had a big, 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 big proportion of the population thinking still that we should have had our chance with communism, yet they didn't get their chance. And even though countries like Slovakia or Czech Republic or Poland, even Russia have been through it, they've lived it, they know it's... Come out the other side. (laughs) Yes, and now they're trying to succeed based on market principles. Greece is still stuck in that conflict. And uh, so... Is is there still a big um, communist political party? Oh, yes, yes. They're going to win the next elections. I have very little doubt right. that they are going to win the, the, the a party called coalition of radical left which involves uh, maoists and uh, trotskyists and communists and stalinists and whatever have you all of these people are in this coalition right. and they are getting a big percentage of the vote um, now what has happened is greece had its own currency for many years it could uh, print that currency to cover its internal uh, consumer needs uh, and any external, any imports that they needed to do uh, as a government or as individuals, they would uh, basically, the, the, the Greek government would uh, borrow money. Um, when it joined... Uh, so deficit spending basically. Deficit spending for many, many years, huge um, inflation rate. Uh, when the, when what kind of inflation rate was it when you were growing up? Uh, 25%, 30%. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was it was pretty high, but it's nothing like it's about to see if it goes out of the euro. Right. Anyway, so so Greece, through fudging the statistics, because that's what they did, 
managed to get into the Eurozone. They did not meet the convergence criteria. And part of the blame is not with Greece. Part of the blame is with um, the European countries and Germany, to be precise, that accepted it, even though they knew they had it in their back in the back of their minds that actually those statistics cannot it doesn't be doesn't work, right. Well, I think it was a political decision. They wanted to basically expand the EU and exactly. have the uh, look at, isn't it great we're expanding the EU? And they wanted, not the EU, they wanted to get Greece in the Eurozone. Oh, the, as, sorry, the, the, uh, the Euro, yeah, yeah. As a political favour. Greece at that point had a socialist government, the equivalent of uh, UK's Labour, let's say. Um, and so did Germany. And obviously because they are in their own little groups that they form, you know, socialists of Europe and all that, they made the political decision amongst each other that, okay, you know, the, the German prime minister said, I'll help the Greek socialist prime minister to win the elections. I'm going to get them in the euro. It's going to look like a great success. I think politics were a big part of it. And the numbers were just uh, inconvenient uh, annoying kind of s side dish right. that they had to deal with so they just faked it to m make sure that it passes the the criteria but I think everyone knew that it was fake right and so, I mean not to get into too much detail but in short what they faked was that they had a significant amount more government debt than was really shown on the books that they yes. were because they'd been involved in deficit spending significantly they basically hid, yes. hid the level of debt that Greece has. They right? did hide the level of debt. They did hide the level of expenditure the government does. Um, they, 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 they hid a lot of stuff. Now, what happens is when Greece joins the EU, the, sorry, the Eurozone, it had a chance to reduce that deficit. It had a chance to actually uh, go back to surplus. But it didn't. Um, the reason I'm saying it had a chance is because it suddenly started borrowing at a much lower cost, so right. paying a lot lower interest rate instead of the 20 or 30 percent or whatever it would have been. I don't know. I cannot remember back so far, mm. but it would have been paying back in uh, the day when it had just a drachma. Now it started borrowing money at Germany's rates. Um, the Greek politicians saw this as a great opportunity to expand the state. To have a party, basically. Exactly. They expanded the state. They expanded spending. They spent so much. If you look at the findings of the EU and the IMF that are going now and auditing Greece's accounts, you would be, you you wouldn't believe in your eyes what you see. It's 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 just the amount of waste that's going on. Um, the the. the Payroll being the biggest cost, you know, as I said, because payroll wins votes. Uh, so you have uh, the state-owned uh, uh, train company that uh, is, is losing so much money that it has to be funded by the government all the time that it would actually cost less to send people to their train destinations by taxi <laughs> rather than having them take the train. Yes, it is true. It is right. true. The, and the, the payroll there, obviously, the, 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 net, uh, the, the average net salary in that uh, company, in that public company, uh, is 60,000 euros. Now, when I go to Greece and tell my friends that in order to make 60,000 euros a year in the UK, you have to prove yourself, you have to work really hard, you have to be a manager mm. or in some cases a director, you know, in a private business, they cannot believe it, obviously, because they haven't lived it. They, they've been yeah. living in this bubble that they grew up in, and they think that 60,000 is normal, is the, mm. the kind of... The rate that you would get. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what happened. They, they started borrowing all this money for very cheap. And then obviously they had the party, they had the Olympics, they, had the, they kept spending, spending, spending. And at some point, well, someone Woke up and started to see, hey, look at with, all of this debt. Yeah, what exactly. the hell's going on? With a crisis, with an economic crisis uh, hitting everyone hard, uh, Greece had to uh, support its banking system and uh, 
obviously it couldn't uh, keep doing it and it couldn't keep uh, funding also the, 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 the big uh, payroll costs that it had. So at some point it just had to ask for additional help and that's when the EU and the IMF stepped in. And now Greece is borrowing at preferential rates. It wouldn't be getting this money in the open market by any chance. It wouldn't be able to, to borrow at these rates. But poor old Slovak taxpayer is borrowing himself at a higher rate so that he can send money to Greece at a lower rate so that Greece can fund the state uh, employee, the, the state railway. Yeah. You know, and probably the Slovak uh, taxpayer is making less money than the Greek uh, state railway employee, which is a great, un it's really unfair mm. what's going on. But, you know, at the moment it's a tricky situation. That, uh, I don't know how it will end up. Right, right. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you don't have a crystal ball or, or whatever, but what do you think is going to happen to the currency? Do you, I mean, what, 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 how do you see this playing out? I, it's a political decision. Mm. Based on the numbers, Greece is bankrupt. Um, it would have been bankrupt uh, many years ago, a couple of years ago, maybe. So it was a political decision not to let it go bankrupt. Uh, Greece's debt is unsustainable unless it does the reforms that the IMF is asking or the um, uh, EU are asking. The, the fact that they have signed agreements to uh, deliver those reforms doesn't mean that they've actually done them. Mm. You hear people complaining, but if anything, not even half of the reforms that have been agreed to have been done. And it's, it's very important to point out here that Greece um, chose all the wrong uh, reforms, all, all the, all the counterproductive reforms. So let's say, for example, that the IMF is proposing a recipe that has two sides. One, increase taxes. Two, stop, stop spending. spending. Greeks decided to increase taxes. But not stop the spending. Not stop the spending. The IMF said, reduce your payroll costs. The Greeks, instead of trying to find uh, where the waste is and close those state-owned businesses, they decided to cut every salary horizontally, including pensions. So obviously you have pensioners that are making 500 euros a month complaining that they're getting a 20% cut, which is, you know, not their fault at all and at the same time you see people retaining their salaries of three or four thousand uh, euros a month in right, the state-owned right. companies so i don't know it, it, it's a, it, what will happen to the currency i think it all depends on greece's willingness to adopt productive measures to adopt measures that will deliver the results that the imf wants in order to guarantee that it will get its money back at some point. Mm. And I see a lot of resistance in Greece, a lot of resistance, which is uh, unrealistic. You know, they, no one wants to lend you money if they have no, uh, if, if, if they know that you're not going to repay it. So the more this is becoming common knowledge, the closer Greece is moving to bankruptcy. And uh, Bankruptcy is not a political decision. It's not like a politician wakes up one day and says, OK, we are just going to declare bankruptcy because that suits our uh, needs. No, uh, it happens from the market. The market decides it. If more and more people start considering, the, considering it higher, of higher probability that Greece will default mm. than uh, carry on as usual, um, then the, it's, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more businesses are going to take their cash out of the country, the more individuals are going to take their cash out of the country, leaving the banking system in need for most, more cash injections. Mm. The government cannot do it. There's more need for more money from the IMF. And at some point, this bubble just bursts. Yes, yeah. uh, what will happen to the currency? Two options. If that happens, probably Greece could 
go into its own currency again and start printing like crazy and probably end up like a Zimbabwe of Europe. And you, then the Eurozone has a choice to make. Does it let also Italy and Spain default? Or does it try to support them? Obviously, there will be a lot of pressure to those countries as well. Mm. And um, Greece could either, uh, sorry, the EU could either say, okay, you know what, we let Greece default because we were sick of them. We tried to help them. They didn't want to help themselves. They didn't want to perform whatever they signed up to perform. So we let, but we are standing uh, next to it's Spain and, and Italy, Italy because right. they are making an effort. They can take that route or they can take the route of, okay, let everything uh, go back to what it used to be and let's have uh, uh, individual currencies at each mm. country. I don't know what will happen. I know that Greece, though, if it goes back to the drachma, uh, e even if it defaults on its debt, it's running on prime, uh, primary deficit, which will mean that from the next day after it has defaulted on its debt, it will need more money than it's it got, has. Yeah. Yes. It will start printing to cover those deficits. That will mean inflation. Mm. Inflation will mean that people don't trust money as a store of value. So they move to gold. They move to they start barter trade. It's, it's a very, very bad situation to be in. And it's yeah. very difficult to control. And it will be... I, I'm hoping that it won't be. But I think it's highly probable that it could end up a humanitarian type of crisis mm. in Greece. Uh, I, I'm well, really hoping. Well, hyperinflations are really, yes. really bad news to live through. Yes, for sure, the ones that I've read about. Well, either that or Greece will have to just accept that it cannot fund the huge state sector that it has and adjust it to the, the, the means that it has. But mm. they are not doing it now that they're being paid to do it. Yeah, and there's no ideological support for that, that as far as you're saying. There, there is very little. Yeah. Uh, there, there are a couple of political parties. There is, uh, but that's like marginal compared yes. to the mainstream. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you, uh, I, obviously I realise that you're here um, in the UK, but, you know, we've talked about where this might be going in terms of some kind of potentially awful hyperinflation nightmare scenario. But yeah. what is it like for people on the ground at the moment in Greece? You know, I understand that what's been happening is that there has been actually, because of the way that um, things have played out, that there is a, a deflation happening in Greece yes. on the ground. And can you sort of, what does that look like for, you know, for just uh, everyday life for people? Well, I think the private sector in Greece now is being sacrificed for the public sector. Um, there's been about one million uh, people that lost their jobs in the last year in the private sector, obviously, because in the public sector you cannot lose your job. Right. Um, the, the, the government is taking completely counterproductive measures. Uh, owning property now in Greece is very expensive. They have put taxes of ownership that are really, really high. And ownership, obviously you understand that ownership of an asset, in order to come to own an asset, you had to pay your income tax in the first place to make the income to buy the mm. asset. So if you have as high uh, ownership uh, costs, people are looking to sell. Obviously no one wants to sell, no one wants to buy because of the situation the market is in. There is a lot of uncertainty and also there is a lot of anger. Um, Unfortunately, it's a misguided anger. Uh, instead of being so angry with um, the EU and the IMF for asking those uh, things that they're asking for Greece to do, they should be angry at their politicians that are not implementing every aspect, but they're only implementing the revenue side uh, aspects of those. Um, obviously, there's also a lot of people that have benefited from this system for many years, mm. And as I said, if you think that it's the norm to uh, get, let's say, a salary of 60,000 a year for doing uh, about as much as someone who should probably, you know, get 
10,000 euros a year. Obviously, you think that that is the norm, that is okay, and when someone tells you, okay, now we have to reduce your salary, you get angry because you are used to a lifestyle and you don't realize what it's like outside of the lifestyle that you're used to. So it is very difficult. Deflation is very hard to adjust to. Um, the, the government is not doing much to uh, create opportunities. And I don't mean subsidizing anything. I mean giving uh, a sort of uh, environment that helps business, like lower taxes, like making it, uh, making the, the, the legal framework around labor relations a little bit more flexible. Uh, all these things that could help the Greek politicians are just not even considering. Instead, they're looking at increasing the government's revenues. This is just felt across the whole economy, from the private sector to everyone else. So obviously everyone is angry. Private sector is angry because they have to pay more. Public sector is angry because they get paid less. No one is happy. Everyone is out in the street all the time going on strike. And in the end, they all blame capitalism. Right. Right. What will happen with that? They will go, they will have a shift to the left, and I don't know what will happen next. There is this party that now is even uh, considering or uh, uh, putting their hands into the deposits, the private deposits, bank deposits, bank, bank, uh, bank accounts, going into the bank accounts and actually uh, confiscating. Confiscating bank accounts to cover government deficits. Yes. Um, so I, I really don't know how this will end up. Obviously, the more people that hear that this is a potential, then th they want to take Get their the cash, cash out. out. Right. The more they take their cash out, the more the harder the it becomes yeah. to, to, to fund the banking yeah. system. Yeah, it's like a really vicious cycle yes. there in there. Yeah. Now, at an individual level, every crisis, yeah. sometimes you can say, well, this is an opportunity to, right? Yeah. What, what, what is the opportunity in Greece now? Well, there are still a lot of entrepreneurial people, even in Greece. I think there are a few of them. I know a few examples of them, mm. probably because of the type of people that I like to be friends with. So they are trying, they, they are trying. And if they, the government does make things a bit more flexible and it allows a lower uh, minimum wage or it reduces taxes or it reduces the property tax, you know, there, there will be more opportunities. I'm sure that uh, Greece, through deflation, it can bounce back mm. and become productive. It has a great uh, scenery that, uh, you know, no matter how bankrupt it gets, it will always be there. The sun and the sea is a valuable commodity mm. that rich people from the rest of the productive world want to go and yeah. get a piece of it. They want to go and experience it. So Greeks can always sell that. They have fertile land that they can start cultivating once again. They've been reliant on subsidies for too long. They actually have forgotten how to uh, farm. farm. Uh, now, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for them to move back to the productive.